Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Splash Drone 3 from Swell Pro. You may have seen my review of the Splash Drone 2 over there. I did multiple videos with that one. Pretty awesome crap that has a few shortcomings. But now Swell Pro has recently released the Splash Drone 3, which is supposed to mitigate some of the shortcomings from the second model. And so this is going to be a multi-part series for the Splash Drone 3. This first video is going to be a unboxing, inspection, and setup. We're going to just see how it all looks out of the box. I'm going to do another video that's going to be the probably a park test and or ocean test. Definitely going to get out to the water. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do first, but it's going to be a full series. Um, we're going to do some underwater explore, exploration like I did with the Splash Drone 2. That thing was pretty awesome. They're supposed to have a much better altitude hold on this one over water, and it's supposed to have a better camera and stuff and an integrated camera, better controller and all that stuff. So. Let's get started and dig in to the Splash Drone 3 from Swell Pro. So if we look at the difference here in size of the packaging, we can see that the Splash Drone 3 bag is definitely longer, but it's not as big. Um, in depth. Let's kind of get into the Splash Drone 3 bag real quick and see what this is all about. So a nice zipper all the way around, pop open the cover and here it is. So everything is molded inside. We can see how on the top we have all these molds to fit all the motors in and stuff. So it looks much more well thought out. Here's the Splash Drone 2 in comparison right here and it does have the same exact body style and top cover. So the things that are going to be different are going to be the motors, the gimbal and camera, and also some of the electronics inside. But looks like overall, the outside of the case is pretty much the same. And we'll be going a little bit further into that in just a sec. But I do just kind of want to unbox it with you guys real quick so we can see everything in here. So it's got these straps here. So two elastic straps to kind of hold everything in. I'm just going to unbuckle those. And we'll work our way from this side to that side and see what's in the box. So first thing we do, here's the upgrade from the Swell Pro 2. One of the major upgrades is the camera and gimbal combo. So we can see this is a 4K camera now. And it's all integrated, very similar to something like you'd find in like the uh, Phantom 4 Pro or Phantom 4, how they have their own proprietary integrated gimbal and camera. And keep in mind that this is waterproof, so this can dunk under salt water, fresh water. All you have to do is rinse it out and you're good to go for a next session. It's got these waterproof type of plugs. You can see the O-ring seals in there, so everything is really well sealed up. They're really good at anodizing their products, so whoever's manufacturing this for them is really doing a good job at um, their anodizing. I really like how they, they have all this. So you can see on the back, it has a Wi-Fi button on the back. So this would be how you can sync it to your phone to download your videos and pictures, I guess. And they're making sure that you know to turn this off before you fly it. You don't wanna have that Wi-Fi on to mess up with any kind of um, control signal. I'm also seeing this little port here, and let's see what this is. Okay, so they actually do have a micro SD card slot there, so um, that's gonna be recording your video and pictures on board. Anyway, uh, the top of the gimbal, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six rubber ball dampers with anti-drop. Um, little safety guys here, safety clips in there. And then we also have this little thumb screw here for ease of on and off. So it looks really good. Really impressed how far they've come with their camera and gimbal. We'll have to see, definitely see how that's going to be performing. And let's see, so here's a charger. So this is a two to four S uh, battery charger, LiPo charger. There's all the functions there. There's some lights over here. And it's telling you from 25 to 100 percent. That's where we're going to plug it in. It feels like a decent charger. Let's just take off this film here. It's definitely heavy, so you know there's hopefully some good stuff in there. It does look like they're upgrading, you know, with some more quality charging components. Okay, another little box here in the side. We'll get to the main event in just a second. I just want to make sure I go through everything so you guys know what it comes in the box with it. All right, so that's just the plug, the wall adapter from the charger to your wall. This stuff in this bubble wrap looks like the propellers. 
Now Swell Pro has chosen to do some twist lock style propellers in this one. The old one were that older Phantom style twist on, you know, where they twist on the opposite way that the motors are going to be spinning so they're always going to be kind of tightening. But they opted for this model to go with a push lock system. This is how this thing's working, it's just a little notch here so you push it down and there's like a spring clamp that notches in. Let's get a little bit more close up picture of the top of the motor. There it is, so in the motor you can see that it's got these spring tensioners and then on the inside of the channel it's got these little um, tabs that are going to lock the propellers in so it's just a push down and lock and we'll go over that in just a second. These do not look like cheap propellers. I know that these guys do pre-balance their propellers from the factory and um, these, if you were to buy these aftermarket, um, I know these are not going to be cheap. These are carbon fiber. You can see the carbon fiber in there and they're pre-balanced. You can see the shaving here so they put them on a balancing machine and they shave them down until they're, they're pre-balanced. So they look pretty high quality, man, that's for sure. Anyway, another box to the right of the Swell Pro 3. Let's see what this is. Okay, cool. So this is, I'm not sure if this is gonna come in every box because what they are gonna be doing is um, having the ability to use this 3D gimbal plus a drop mechanism. They're working on something like that where it's a combo. So you can have that nice footage and control your pitch in, of, the, of the camera and roll of the camera as well as do a drop at the same time. Currently there's no way to do that. So what they do is they have this, it's called this Fisherman Combo where you don't have any uh, remote pitchable camera. This is an FPV camera but it's a fixed pitch. It's just going to fix wherever you put it. And there's a drop mechanism here attached to it. You can see that um, that pin's gonna slide out. That's what they included in this package. I'm not sure if this comes with every one, so um, I'll have to double check on that. But a little couple more peripherals in the box. It looks like there's uh, another patch for the top here. This little diaphragm, perhaps. It looks like they give you an extra one there. Here's some more straps, like a neck strap for the radio. It says Swell Pro on it. Uh, USB cable. This is going to be micro USB. We have an extra thumb screw, anodized thumb screw. Looks like a bind plug. And a couple of other peripherals like a wrench. Uh, another cap. It looks like if you're going to have the gimbal off, you can screw that onto the bottom of the port so it seals it up waterproof and a couple uh, waterproof plugs. So here's the drone. Here is the cool new looking controller. Go over that in just a second. I'm just going to pull everything out here. Landing gear, a couple other peripherals. Looks like there's a sticker in the bottom for some information. A battery. Oh, there is an extra set of propellers. My mistake, sorry about that. They do take care of you with an extra set. Awesome. The battery's here. There should be one battery in the craft. We'll check that out in just a second. And these are 4S 5200 milliamp hour 25C batteries with the XT60 connectors and there's your balance plug there. This other little bag, just check this out really quick. Okay, so this is if you wanted to use your drone as like an autopilot function. So this is a um, 915 mega megahertz receiver for like telemetry. So you're gonna sync this with the Swell Pro app and your phone or tablet is gonna be linked through USB. You're gonna have this by your controller somewhere. And so if you did wanna use um, those auto functions on your tablet, you definitely can. I went through that in my first review of the Splash Drone 2 and it seemed to work pretty good. It looks like it's just using a uh, customized ver version of Mission Planner. Um, is what they're using. So again, what this is doing is there's another antenna, smaller antenna, a receiver in here. And again, your Android device is connecting to this. You're running Swell Pro's version of something similar to Mission Planner. And um, this is communicating with the craft and so you can draw and put waypoints and it will fly auto missions. That's pretty much all this thing is for. So we get some stickers, flight battery information, safety information, and here's the main little quick start guide. Looks like they're not giving us like a full-fledged manual. Of course, you could go online and check that out. But here it is. It's feeling um, feeling pretty much almost waterproof material here. It's like this coated material. And it's telling you 
everything you get in the box and how to connect everything, you know, schematics on what everything is. There's the controller. Here's all the functions of the controller for video, you know, payload release, return to home, flight modes, all this kinds of stuff, and then how, what the sticks are doing and all that stuff. So that's on that side. And then on the second side here, it continues to go through like calibration. Um, definitely want to calibrate your compass and stuff. So it goes through that pretty thoroughly. This is definitely better manual than the Splash Drone 2. It looks like they learned their lesson. And here's what I was talking about, that little data link module for telemetry. Uh, this is going to give you, if you download the Splash Drone app on your um, mobile device, this is what it's going to look like uh, when you connect. It looks like they have made some improvements to it since the Splash Drone 2. It looks a little bit different. So anyway, this does have the capability for auto mission flight. So that's pretty cool. And last but not least, guys, sorry for the wait. Here it is, the Splash Drone 3. Uh, like I was saying, it looks almost exactly the same as the Splash Drone 2 as far as the body style. The only thing I'm seeing that's different is it has a different gimbal attachment module. This looks like this is gonna attach gimbals and um, drop mechanisms and that fisherman camera kit I was showing you. So definitely a much better system than they had before. They had a few screws. So this is much better and easier and quick release there. Here's that waterproof port that uh, you just plug in whatever peripheral you're using. So you can have that drop mechanism, camera, and everything communicating to the internals of the craft. Here's where we're gonna hook up our landing gear, these nice little aluminum uh, acceptance ports here for the landing gear we'll put on in just a second. These are just little rubber tabs that kind of keep the water out of the screw holes here that they choose to put in. I think they gave us a couple more of those in the box. Continuing on, I'm seeing that they stuck with the same bottom mounted antennas. Now this was a little bit of a con I had with the Splash Drone 2 where they had the um, FPV and control antennas mounted on the bottom. And um, when the thing about that is when you're dropped in the water and you have your gimbal underneath and you're trying to FPV underwater, these guys aren't gonna transmit that good when they're under the water. So that's still kind of a little bit of improvement I think Swell Pro needs to do. If they could put their antennas somewhere sticking out the side at least and a little angled up like this, at least it will be out of the water when you're setting down on the water as long as the propellers aren't going to hit those little nubs, but if they put them somewhere like this and just stuck them up diagonally, no problem with viewing the video underwater. But as it was with the Splash Drone 2, once you land in the water, pretty much all your FPV gets scratchy and blocked out. So that was one of the major cons I had in the um, Splash Drone 2, and it doesn't look like they really fixed that but we'll have to definitely see in the flight test just to see how that's working. And here are the specs on the motors, 3510, 620KV. So these are monster motors, waterproof, keep in mind. Um, all you need to do is rinse them off really good with fresh water if you're gonna go in salt water. So moving over to the top, this is the canopy, the removable waterproof canopy here. And this is gonna have that diaphragm that allows the um, barometer inside to kind of breathe you know, trying to expand and retract the pressure in here and release some pressure actually. So all the electronics are gonna work while still keeping it waterproof. And all this is is a little warning sticker here and it's saying that make sure the membrane is in good shape, not cracked or damaged when you're flying in water um, because water could infiltrate there. So that's what that other one was. They did give you a, an extra one you can put in there if this one starts to get scratched or damaged. We can see that this is the GPS module right on top internally. Actually, you know what? I am noticing a slight difference uh, from the Splash Drone 2. This one is slightly see-through. You see how the plastic is see-through? The old Splash Drone 2, pure black, no see-through at all. But this one um, is a welcome change with a little bit of see-through so you could see if possibly you have any water infiltration you know, if water gets in there, it's definitely going to create some steam, and so you'll be able to check right away if something's wrong internally. But pretty cool, and the way this works is you just got these four thumb screws. So we'll just take this off real quick, check it out internally, and then we'll put on the uh, landing gear and the gimbal. Cool, so we're just easily loosening all these up, and this is where you want to be kind of careful because the GPS module is on the top. 
can see here that we have this nice thick silicone, this white silicone to keep everything nice and dry inside. Speaking of the silicone, actually this looks like it's like a millimeter thicker silicone gasket here, so that's great. But it looks very similar inside to the last one. Um, you've got your same type of way you put in the battery with the Velcro here. It's got just one Velcro strap. I was able to fit a, uh, these are 50, what, 200 milliamp hour battery. I was actually able to squeeze in uh, an 8,000 milliamp hour multi-star battery. Yeah, these are 5,200. So this is the second one you get with the kit. If you wanna do that, these can use up to like an 8,000 milliamp hour battery. I do have a video on that if you wanna check that out on my channel. Anyway, further exploring internally, video transmitter here, you can see there. And yeah, so it does look like they're continuing to put the video transmit antenna down in those bottom tabs on the bottom. Anyway, we can see in the arms, there's an ESC in there. And then that's actually the uh, receiving module for that little telemetry link module. You can see how, the, how it's up there in the arm. So if you wanted to do that auto feature, that's where that thing's located. The interesting thing about this module is they have the antenna for that module just in the arm. So they're actually keeping that antenna above the water. Moving on to the other side, we see we have a SP01 receiver. It's just branded as Swell Pro here. And it has an LED and an update. And then we have all the channels here on the side. Check this out. So it does look like the receiver antenna is going into this arm too. So this will slightly be a little bit more above the water than these guys on the bottom. That little rubber nipple here on the bottom, this is actually empty. So what they chose to do is bring up the control antenna into the arm, but they still do have that FPV antenna. Like you saw on the other side, that one is still running into that little bottom nipple. So maybe just bringing that out and putting it somewhere in this arm on the top might actually give us better video when we're landed on the water. So I may just do that. I may pull it out and just like tape it up somewhere on the top of this arm and see if we get actually better video when we're um, sitting on the water than the splash drone too. Okay, so I'm gonna close this thing up and remember just to be really careful while um, moving this thing around. This is a cable that's connected to the flight controller. So you don't wanna be yanking on this cable a lot. It's coming from the GPS to the flight controller. And when you're closing this thing, you want the front arrow to be facing at this, the front of the drone. And another way to tell, since this does have two insignias on the front and the back, is to these little nipples are always in the back of the craft. And then the front is gonna have the gimbal connection. So you always know that this is the front of the craft. Cool, so anyway, gonna screw this on. All you do is make sure everything's lined up and screw it on, not too tight, but crank it down pretty good with your fingers just so that silicone seal is not gonna let any water get in. And all you're doing is sliding this um, fiberglass or whatever this is on the landing gear into these little aluminum uh, accepting ports here just pushed in by pressure so you just really give it some good oomph there and they're actually just locked in there you can see how they're bent a little bit this way so I guess the tension keeps them in there really good and those things really aren't gonna come out unless you yank them super hard this is how much tension it takes to pull these out so I'm gonna have to brace on the craft and I'm really yanking on this right now to get that out so that's definitely not gonna come out in any type of normal you know water use so you want to definitely hit hear that knock when it goes all the way to the back make sure they're all the way in cool so landing gears on and that's kind of how it's sitting uh, level with the landing gear on one of the things i wish they might have done was include an extra set of these little rubber interlocking grommets um, i did have one of mine on the splash drone too just kind of disintegrate and it cracked down here because of the salt water after a while. So might be good if Swell Pro, if you're watching, maybe include a new set of these in the package because these are prone to wear out pretty quick in my experience. Okay, cool. So let's put on the gimbal and when you flip this thing over, be careful of that diaphragm. You don't want to be scratching on anything. Make, make sure you have maybe a nice and smooth surface and maybe even put down a cloth if you're going to be working on it upside down like this. You don't want to let water be getting into that diaphragm. So make sure that thing is taken care of. So removing this thumb screw, and it looks like all we need to do is flip this over, pop it over this little block. So you see that it can only go on one way. Just make sure the camera's facing forward. Slide it over that block and that's it. What a big improvement from the last one. That's great. And then we're just sliding in the thumb screw. 
tightening it down nice and tight. Just got a quarter and yeah, that fits in there perfectly. And you can just give it a little more tension because you do not want this expensive gimbal camera coming off in the water. And that thing is on there. That is not gonna come off in any kind of water as long as this thumb screw is on. So really good design, very quick release for all different kinds of mechanisms. Seems like it's pretty easy to work on if you just set it down because these legs are perfect at the perfect angle. And to plug this whole unit into the bottom, this connector does have a little notch there on one side on the edge. So you see that little notch to my left. So you're gonna have to line this up perfectly. So this whole thing is gonna have to go slide on just like this. And so this right angle is sticking out to the side. Um, and that's, I guess, just how it is. And to better help you, they actually put a little red arrow, if you see that there, a little red arrow and a dot on the accepting end just so you know how to line it up. So this one you're gonna wanna crank down pretty darn tight, just finger tight, you know, till you can't turn it anymore. And so you know that that silicone O-ring is really seating in there and there's no water that's gonna get in there. And of course, once you get that guy on there, that's how it's gonna look. This is just coming through the side. Since this start part doesn't move, the cable can be pretty short and they did a pretty good job at not giving you too much cable that's gonna go all over the place. So after everything's installed, look at that. So a nice clean installation. Here's our two axis gimbal actually. This is not a three axis. For some reason I thought it was a three. So it doesn't do any yaw stabilization this way. It's just doing pitch and roll stabilization. So you are gonna still get a little bit of left and right jitter possibly in your videos, unless they have some kind of software stabilization. But we'll definitely be checking that out in the flight test. Okay, I knew we were missing something, and here's the controller. So it's taken us a while, but I finally got to the controller. Probably should have showed you guys this first before I installed that gimbal, but either way, here it is. Um, it's got this plastic bag over it to keep it nice and clean. It's got these two little stick bumpers here of foam just for shipping. And this is pretty cool looking. Look at this thing. It's got some nice big wide handles here with the sticks on both ends, power button, another power button. This thing feels really good in the hand. First thought is will this thing tilt up? Yes, it will for a better view of the screen. Wow, that's pretty neat. You got a power button and it looks like a little zoom button on the side there. And on this side of the screen, we have channel, menu, and band. So it has a whole built-in FPV receiver in the screen. Let's take off this little screen protector. Nice. So a pretty cool little screen all built in. That was very clever of Swell Pro to include this in this version. And what the screen is gonna be doing is receiving the FPV signal from this antenna. You can see here on the antenna, it's categorizing it as a 5.8 gigahertz. So 5.8 is in conjunction with FPV. And on this one here, this antenna, you can see that it is listing it as 2.4. So this is gonna be the control antenna for your controls. And this one's gonna show you your video, which that's putting out from the craft. So it looks like they've done a really nice job at labeling the toggle switches here. We got video, preview, and photo. Here's the airdrop. So if you have a drop mechanism attached to it, um, off would mean it's holding the device and pull this down and it will open up that airdrop pin and release whatever you're, you have hanging from the craft. On the right side here, we have all the different modes. So we see on the top of this toggle is GPS mode. That's gonna give it that position lock and it's just gonna sit there in the air if you have your hands off the controllers. In the middle, we have smart cruise Wow, I have to check in the manual exactly what that means. Attitude mode, where it's basically uh, turning off your GPS for GPS lock stabilization, and it's just the craft is gonna still maintain its altitude, but it's gonna blow with the wind sideways. But you gotta be careful, because it's not gonna lock in your lateral position. Have this toggle in normal mode if for just normal flight, and then if you wanna bring this thing back home automatically, flip that down and the craft should fly and land exactly where it took off or very near it. And we're gonna also be testing that in the flight test. I didn't see that, but also on the antenna base, there's a 5.8 there and also a 2.4 gigahertz written there down on the controller so you know which one to put your antennas on. Near the toggles, there's also these right trigger buttons. Now, I'm not sure what these are doing yet. We'll have to check in the manual. Okay, and last controls on the controller are on the left side here. It looks like we have like a gimbal roller. So this is going 
at an extent to both sides and spring back to the center. So one of these is gonna be gimbal roll and one of these is gonna be gimbal pitch up and down. And the reason Swell Pro does that is because when you are in the water, sometimes when you hit the water, the gimbal gets a little skewed from, to, from the right or left roll. And so they like to give you the ability to level that out for your, um, your video to be nice and level on horizon. So I do think that's actually a good feature. We do have this aluminum, nice little hand grip here. We got some Swell Pro information there. So popping the battery tray open and we do have a 1800 2S um, battery in there. 7.4 volt with a JST connector, a little balance connector. So it looks like they're squeezing that thing in there perfect and that's you're not really gonna be able to, to put anything larger in there. Moving on down to the bottom, we do have a port here and uh, I don't really have anything to open up this port right now so I'm just gonna use the propeller. Probably not a good idea to do this, but oh, there we go. Okay, so this does have a little leash on it, so it's not gonna fall out. So the port on the left looks like an audio or trainer port, and the right is just a micro USB port, probably for updating if you wanted to update your software on the controller. So if you're wondering about, is this controller waterproof or what, I would say no. I don't see any seal on the battery compartment here. There's no silicone seal, and it does look like water would be able to get in there. Maybe fresh water it would be okay if a little bit splashed and got in these seams, but salt water for sure. Do not let salt water get on this controller whatsoever. Of course, you could do some kind of waterproofing yourself to it, but um, I'd imagine that the seams of all this stuff, water can eventually get in through the gimbals and stuff. So keep this out of the water. Let's go ahead and charge this battery up a little bit and turn this on and see how it looks on the bench powered up. Okay, so inserting the micro SD card. You're gonna need some kind of like wedge object to get this card in and out, just to let you know. There we go. And make sure you definitely seal that up really good before that thing goes in the water. Okay, so let's try power up the other way. I'm gonna try the craft first and then the controller to see if maybe we get a better FPV signal once the thing's powered up. Let's power on the controller, both buttons in. Power that guy on. That is the FPV there. Let's turn it this way, see if it's any better. There we go, that's better. I think it must have just been the orientation of the FPV. So here we go, here's our entire screen. You know what I wanna do is stop the recording. So it's a toggle switch for your video and your pictures and then to have it off is in the middle there. So good to know. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the OSD information on here. We got our voltage up at the top. Battery is 15.4 volts. Over to the right, we have our satellites. Right now in the house, we're getting 10 satellite lock. Is that our vertical speed in milliseconds? And then over to the left, we have our pitch and our roll degree. And the Y there is our yaw degree. Looks like it's using meters, so hopefully maybe we can configure this to feet if we wanted to. We might have to plug into the craft and configure this. On the left, we have our distance. I think this is, one of these two is distance traveled and one of them is distance to home. I think the arrow here is which direction home is and how far away home is. And I think this D on the left is total distance traveled. H there is the height. And we have um, see what mode it's in. So right now it's in GPS mode. And then on the bottom, very bottom right, we have, it's kind of hard to see, but we have a time sense turned on, four minutes and 42 seconds. Probably don't want to have it sitting here for that long because components will get hot in there. I'm just doing this for this review. The last things we can see on the screen is a horizon line. So if we tilt it, that horizon line should be tilting. See how it's tilting there a little bit. And we also have a little reticle in the middle. So it looks like it's using Minim OSD for its overlay OSD here. Bottom left, it's showing us where we have 14 megapixel images and that's how many images we can take, 17,486 with a 64 gigabyte card. And if we push up back into video mode, there we go. So it's doing HD 60 frames per second. And that's it going again for video. Let's try these right and left rollers. So the left is our roll. You can see how I'm adjusting the roll of the camera here. So some people may not like that, but you know what? This is a watercraft and that gimbal is going to get skewed. And so that is necessary to have a roll stabilization fix. So I think it was good for them to, to actually do that. The right uh, roller here, I'm just pushing it with my pointer finger 
and pulling to the right is making our gimbal go down. That's the maximum speed, by the way. So that's it for the controller. Of course, uh, this is your altitude, your yaw, and your pitch and your roll, and they're all springing back to the center. So it's just gonna have that altitude hold hover. Anyway guys, pretty interesting. I'm gonna power this off. We're gonna try to put one propeller on and see how this mechanism works. Okay, so putting on a propeller, uh, these are labeled. So you can see on the motor there, it says CCW or counterclockwise on some motors and some motors say clockwise. That one says CW for clockwise. So what we do is we pick up our propeller and we look at what it has written underneath. So that's a CCW. So that means this one is gonna go on this motor. And putting these on should be pretty darn simple since they're just push lock. I'm just basically rotating the motor and trying to get a feel for where these notches are. So there's, there's kind of some notches. So when you push it down, you're not gonna be able to really move it around except one direction. So pushing down and then it just kind of pops back up and that thing is locked in there. Maybe give it a tug up just to make sure it's locked. So it's not moving at all back and forth or up and down. It's completely locked rock solid in there. So that's a really good feature. Look how big these propellers are. Let's take this back off and look how big these propellers are. So pushing, holding the motor like this, pushing down. So I feel the spring go down and then twisting like, you know, quarter turn and then pulling up. And that was pretty darn quick and easy. So these propellers are 12 by 42 byte. So 12 inch carbon fiber propellers. Very nice. Okay guys, so I think that kind of covers everything on the main craft here. I wanted to just, if you want to stick around, I know this is going to be a long one, but if you want to stick around and see quickly how to set this um, module up, this data link Bluetooth module to have the automated flight, I'm going to do that real quick and that's going to end the video. So let's just set this up and see if we can get all working and see how the auto flight is. What you need to do is go to swellpro.com and download the Swell Pro Fly app from their support section. There's a support section and you can download a bunch of apps. And um, they do have it on iOS and Android. I'm gonna be using it on my Android phone today and also in the flight test just to see how it works. The cool thing that it looks like is in um, changing from the Swell Pro version two to this new version three is you don't have to have the controller connected to the Swell Pro drone while you're using the app. In the Swell Pro 2, you had to have the controller on in order to use this automated app. So here's what we need to do. We need to turn on the module, and all this is is make sure you charge it, of course. We can charge it with that USB cable that came with uh, in the craft box right in here on the micro USB port. Make sure that's all the way charged up, and just turn it on just by clicking and holding it. You're gonna see some lights. And so this, this guy here, this is what you're gonna have to bring with you, either put it in your pocket or be holding it with your phone because this is gonna be communicating between the craft, this little data module and your phone. So you need to have this somewhere within like 20 to 30 feet of you if you're doing this. So you, you know, you could set it down um, in the area you're gonna be flying, but if you're gonna be mobile and you're gonna be wanting to do follow me modes, definitely bring this with you. Anyway, we're gonna boot that guy up and just leave that right there. Then I'm gonna start up the drone again, just by plugging in. Okay, then we go ahead and make sure our Bluetooth is on, and we're gonna go into the Swell Pro Fly app that we downloaded from swellpro.com. Cool, so there we go, so it's just opens up into a map and it's using the GPS of your phone. What we need to do is connect to the Bluetooth. So I'm pressing on Bluetooth here. And what we need to do is search for devices on the very bottom. So a little funky, I can barely see the very bottom here. So I'm just gonna try to connect to UAV1 here. So I'm pressing that on that there. Bluetooth pairing we request, pair. Let's see if it works. There we go. So I got a green connected up at the top. So we wanna see uh, some fluctuation here in our parameters. So you can see on the information screen, we have 11 satellites. We got two options up at the top. So we have flight status. We can control the craft from here. Actually on the regular flight status screen, we see that we have all these controls. This one saying return to home. The second one saying unlock motors. This third one is saying ascend. This one's descend. This one here is hover, guide, and follow. 
So with guide, what you'd be doing is just pointing, clicking on the screen, and it will just be going to those points immediately. Follow, of course, is gonna be following you. It's gonna lock into the GPS of your phone and it's just gonna keep following you. So very similar to um, the first app, the Swell Pro app that I use with the Swell Pro 2, this one is just a little bit different and you can connect to it and supposedly fly it with just your phone. You don't even have to turn on your controller. So cool, real quick, we'll go into waypoints and we'll just quickly, I'll just quickly demonstrate how you can put some waypoints on the screen. So in this screen here, we'll go, we'll hit add and this is where we'll start adding waypoints. So we can do individual like that. You see how it's placing those green dots there. And then basically at each waypoint, you can click on it here and you can adjust um, you know, how high you want it to be at that waypoint and how many seconds you want it to delay and sit there until you fly to the next waypoint. So um, that's it looks like that's all I can adjust on each waypoint. I'm gonna go save and back. You can either remove waypoints. So I just hit remove and I'm just gonna click on three and that just deletes it from the bottom there. But when you're ready, you have your path down and you're ready to go, just click send. And that's actually sending it from your phone to the craft. And when you're ready to fly, I believe you have to launch first. We'll check that out in the flight test, but I think you have to launch and then hit execute. I'm not sure if it'll launch right when you hit execute. So we'll be checking that in the flight test. There we go. So it looks like you kind of have to zoom in to get any kind of line. So maybe that flight path is way too big, but regardless, that's how it works. And we'll do a little flight path auto flight in the park when I uh, do the flight test in the next video. Cool guys, so I think that pretty much goes over everything in the unbox. Uh, we got a little boot up, we got to see the screen, how the screen looks in the FPV. And keep in mind that you can also change these um, FPV frequencies and bands here and also go into the menu. That's one of the things I didn't go through was the menu. So let me boot this guy up and go into the menu real quick so you guys can see what that menu looks like. So I'm pressing menu on the right side, brightness, contrast, saturation on the color. We can do language, sleep, and transparent on the, the menu. And then function, we can do um, reset TV system and zoom. So probably won't be needing to get into that menu button anytime soon. Hit this zoom button. Oh, okay, so that's the search. I forgot to cover that. So maybe if you're having video breakup and it seems a little weird, hit this little hourglass search here on the left and it should search for the best possible channel. And that doesn't really look like it, does it? Looks like all the um, OSDs all messed up. So in that case, let me try to go channel plus and minus and see if we can find a better channel. Okay, there we go. So the search got us close, but it didn't get us on the clearest channel. So keep that in mind as well. Anyway guys, sorry for the lengthy unbox and setup and inspection, but that's what it takes to figure out everything that's involved and get you guys knowing what's going on with this craft. And I really hope you enjoyed that. Now keep in mind, this is not a cheap craft. This is a waterproof, high performing, high endurance craft that does 4K video and you know it's got auto features as well if you wanted to use that. This is actually the Fisherman and the auto version combined. So with the auto version, you get this little guy here. With the Fisherman version, you get that extra little camera you saw with the drop mechanism and that fixed camera. So they're kind of, they kind of threw everything in the package so I could show you guys what this was all about. So don't forget to check the link down in the description and you can check the pricing and you know all more in-depth specs on it. Don't forget, I will be doing full-on waterproof tests in the ocean here. I live in Hawaii, so we're gonna get some awesome shots. If you miss my Swell Pro 2 ocean-proof test, check that out and you can eventually watch this when I have the video up to see just how this performs differently than Splash Drone 2. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Sorry this video was so long, but stuff you need to know. See you in the next one.